Manaki New Zealand Scholarships. Today we are going to New Zealand to talk about the fully funded scholarship there for international students. What are the eligibility requirements, your yeah. application requirements, the things that you need to have before you can submit your application to the scholarship. We'll be talking about everything today. And because this scholarship actually plays a lot of emphasis on your essays, what are your goals, the things you wish to achieve, how you wish to achieve it, how the program will benefit you, all those things. They ask a lot of questions relating to that, which is why I'll be giving you a sample which I've written for all those questions so you can use them as a guide because I selected a specific field which I like, the biological science. I chose that field and I wrote the sample, the essay samples to answer all those questions based on that field. So your field is likely to be different, definitely. That means you're going to write your own pertaining to your own field. You have to write it with respect to your field. You just have to use the essay that I wrote as a guide for to answer all the questions. So to start with, what are the benefits of this scholarship? The first benefit is your tuition fees will be paid for. You'll be given weekly allowance. You'll be set up allowance upon your arrival and return to your home country. In medical allowance, tutoring allowance, travel fees and insurance, isolation fees if need be. Research and thesis cost and a lot of other benefits are attached to the scholarships. So these are just a few of them. Then the eligibility requirements, they place a lot of emphasis on the countries eligible to apply to, to scholarships and they have grouped them based on the regions. They have the Pacific countries, Asian countries, African countries. So these are the countries eligible to apply in Africa. So if you're from any of these countries, you can go ahead and submit your application. Then there are other requirements too. For example, the age requirement are there. But first, we're starting with the country eligibility. So these are the countries that are eligible. Caribbean countries and a whole lot of other countries. So, so if your country, if you're from Africa, your country is under this list, you can submit your application. You can just do what's necessary. So the second one, eligibility criteria. So for the first eligibility criteria is the age requirement. It must be 20 years or older. There is no upper age limit yet. Is it? There is no upper age limit for applicants. However, we do prefer applicants who are under the age of 40. Even though if you are above 40, you can still apply. If your application is strong enough, they will consider it. They, can just, they just place a lot of emphasis on those that are within the age of 18 and 40. Another requirement, is a requirement, you can come here, you can always come here and read all those requirements on your own. English requirements, you might be required to write IATS or TOEFL. They call me to read it on your layer type. So you must contribute to your country's development. That's why I said they place a lot of emphasis on that essay. That, they have four headlines for you after they ask you about you, your work experience and all that. They have four headlines asking you different questions to answer. And the better you answer those questions, as well determine your chances of securing a place for the scholarship. And for this scholarship, the first thing that you need to do is that, because a lot of people do ask me, do I need to apply to the scholarship and apply to the university? This scholarship has said everything that you need to know. If you just come here, you read everything, you will be able to understand it. But to answer that question, first, you need to apply to the scholarship. After you've been able, you've gotten a place, they will send you an email, they will let you know, okay, you've been selected as those that will participate in this scholarship. Then the next thing that you need to do is submit an application to the university. So you must have been selected by this university before you should submit an application. So the first thing you just need to do is submit your application and wait for a call from them. Then the third one, research study subjects. They have the research study subjects based on their area. So based on the Pacific region students, Asian, African, Caribbean, Latin American. So for African students, these are the study area, climate change and resilience, and great business for management and others in the energy. If you're from Africa, your study area should be in this field. Your study area should be under this field. 
Then we have number four, research available courses. And okay, these are the available courses page. And they have there are eight universities which you can choose from. Auckland University, Lincoln University, Mercy University, and a whole lot of other those are the eight universities that you can choose from. So you go to the university, you check their courses. Then if you're from Africa, like I said, your course has to be under this airline. That means you're choosing a university that has this course where you have to submit your application. Then number five, how to apply. So they have the application process for each region for African countries, you definitely need to check your eligibility requirements. If you are not eligible, you shouldn't submit. If you're eligible, then you can go here and submit your application online. These are the process that you need to follow to submit your application. If you just boil up, you'll be able to start your application and submit. Then they have the preferred candidates here. So this is where it explains the fact that preferred candidates are those that they call for for the scholarship. So to get a scholarship, the preferred candidate must successfully apply for admission to a university or education institute. So once they've called you that, okay, you are among the preferred candidates for this scholarship, then immediately you need to submit an application for admission to your desired university. And after you submitted an application and you've gotten an offer in that institution, then they will send you a letter, your own scholarship letter, that you submit you do all the necessary process. But the first thing and the most important thing is for you to just submit your application to the scholarship first. You have to submit your application here first. Then after that, you can go ahead with the scholarship if you've been selected to be the preferred candidate. Lastly, their essay question. I have like seven, my sample reached seven pages. So as I said, they place a lot of emphasis on how you answer this question. So this is what will determine your ability to secure the scholarship. So in this essay, there are four headlines. The first one is development relevance. Follow the instruction very well. Keep your answers concise. They have the limits that you can write for them. Most of them are uh, 1,200 characters. Then the first question is, what skills and knowledge do you hope to get from your proposed study program? So here I use biological science as an example of the proposed study area. And I have four airlines. The fundamentals of biology is going to develop you to have a basic understanding of this. Gives you laboratory skills, progress of inability, and communication. I will leave the link to this essay for you to go through and have an idea on how you can write your own. Too. So under the second, the second question under the topic of development relevance, why are these knowledge and skills important to your country's development? So in anything that you are writing for them, you just have to be making sure that you are relating it to your country because it plays a lot of emphasis also on your country's development. And I choose Nigeria here as an example of the country because Nigeria is among the eligible countries for the scholarship. Uh, yes, yeah, so the knowledge, uh, firstly, biological science play vital role in addressing some most pressing age challenges in any countries. And you can come here and read it. Then the third question How will you use your new knowledge and skills to contribute to the development of your own country? My airlines here are health improvement, environmental protection, science and technology development. Then the number two question, relationship management. For this one, I just described a situation that might occur and how you can develop a relationship in that kind of situation. So here, if you attend scientific conferences, you get to meet a lot of people, new people, you develop a relationship with them, you collaborate with scientists in your field, you develop a relationship with them, you participate in professional organizations, by so then you develop relationship with those people there. You publish papers, you go to conferences, you do presentations and a lot of other things to develop relationship. Then the third one, the third line is self-drive. What, what motivates you? What keeps you going? Another. Yeah, I use an example of 
سامان کاستیرا she was determined motivated and she has a passion but she faced several challenges along the way and how does she overcome those challenges she set clear goals develop a study plan stay focused and avoid distraction and at the end of this they will tell you what's the outcome of the challenges that you face how do you solve the problem and what's the outcome yeah i just cite an example of it simple as come that could come from it this self-motivation and drive to succeed this is an example of personal motivation and determination to achieve one goal then lastly studying overseas they want to know how uh, the place that you selected to study okay tell us why you selected new zealand as a place of study so why do you select it from here yeah, i said quality of education natural natural beauty safe and welcome, welcoming environment research opportunities career development we can use the, this airline also to tell them why you select new zealand to be a place for your study then second question under this airline studying abroad if successful that is if you're choosing for the scholarship what specific things we you do to prepare yourself to move to and overcome the challenges of living and studying in a different country so for this research the first thing that you can do the things that you can do is i don't actually put an example i just will an area that you can talk about you can tell them okay you've researched the countries you've seen that it's a perfect fit for you they have this kind of facilities in their laboratory or something like that that would help you to I chose very well to the new environment or something of such. Or you can talk about learning new languages. If this is a country whereby the major language spoken is quite different from your local language, you can tell them, okay, you've been trying to learn the language. And in, in New Zealand, I think majority speaks English, but there are some part of it that speaks another language. And another second language, most common language, apart from English, is Maori. Then you can explain, okay, you've been trying to learn the language and all that. Establish a support network. Make financial preparation. Now you've prepared yourself financially to be able to adapt to the environment. You plan your cultural achievement. Definitely, there is going to be a cultural shock. So you tell them how you've planned it. How you've planned, how you'll be able to adjust to the new culture and be successful. And you familiarize yourself with the transportation and accommodation system. So those are the four essays and all the questions. They have like how many questions to embrace for six like seven or they just said ten questions there because there are some other ones that just split it. Like talking about telling you to describe a situation and now you overcome it. So these are all the questions you can call me at any time and just check it to get an idea of how you can write your own too. So that's that about the scholarship. The scholarship application has opened. It opens yesterday, which is February 2nd and is going to close by 28th. So you need to submit your application as soon as possible. It's closing by 28th of February. It's closed by 28th of February. Now that means you still have time to write your essay. You don't need to rush much about it. Write your essay, make sure you perfect it. After you've written your essay, go through it, make corrections whenever there's grammatical errors, correct it. You can use Grammarly Premium to get the perfect uh, corrections of your essay. Then after you've done all the necessary correction, you can submit your application. So I hope this video helps you in submitting your application for this. And I look forward to hearing your success story after you've secured this scholarship. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.